Hi there. In our previous lesson, we discovered that displacement reactions can help us to rank metals in a reactivity series. Were you able to complete the task? Here is the answer. Our reactivity series now reads potassium, sodium, lithium, calcium, magnesium, zinc, iron, lead and copper. We saw that reactive metals displaced hydrogen from hydrochloric acid, but copper, which is an unreactive metal, did not. In the next two lessons, we will look at how metals react with their metal salt solutions. These reactions can also be called displacement reactions because a more reactive metal will displace the less reactive metal from a solution of its salt. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the observations and write balanced chemical equations for the displacement reactions that you see. For the displacement reactions that we will look at during the next two lessons, we will use four metals in their solid form and four solutions of each metal salt. All the solutions have ions with a charge of 2 plus to make this a fair test. The metals that we will use are copper, zinc, iron and lead. The metal salt solutions we will use are copper 2 nitrate, a zinc solution, an iron 2 nitrate solution and a lead 2 nitrate solution. In this lesson we are only going to look at how the metals react with the copper 2 nitrate and iron 2 nitrate solutions. We will investigate the reactions with the other two solutions in our next lesson. Okay, I need to pour some of the copper 2 nitrate into four test tubes. I then place a piece of metal into each of the test tubes. I'm also going to label the test tubes as I put the metal in so that we don't forget which metal is in which test tube. It's going to take some time for these reactions to take place, so we can put these away and prepare our next experiment in the meantime. This time, I half fill the test tubes with iron 2 nitrate. I then place a piece of metal in each test tube and label them again. We need to set this aside for a while as well, so why don't we draw up a table to record our observations in the meantime. What sort of observations can we expect? Well. Copper 2 nitrate solution is a transparent blue color and iron 2 nitrate solution is a transparent pale yellow green color. So we know that if these solutions change color they could indicate a reaction, right? So in this column we will list all of our changes in the color of the solution. In previous reactions we also noted results when the appearance of the metal changed. Remember the rust coating on the iron nail that was left in water? That could indicate a reaction. So in this column, we'll put in the change in metal. 
And in this column over here, we'll write in the solution that we're working with, which for now is copper 2 nitrate. Now, let's see if our reactions show any results. Let's start by looking at the test tubes that we filled with the copper 2 nitrate solution. In the first test tube, we placed some copper. There's no change in this test tube. The shiny orange copper metal is exactly the same and the blue copper 2 nitrate solution has not changed color. Here, have a closer look. Now let's look at the other three test tubes. Here the results are quite different. Do you see that all three of our metals are covered with a red-brown dark substance? The solution has also changed. In all three test tubes, it is now much lighter. In tube 2, it has gone a murky green color. Let's note the results in our table. We saw a similar reaction in all these test tubes. A red-brown coating on our metals and a faded copper 2 nitrate solution. What do you think this red-brown coating is? Well, to figure out what our results mean, we have to start with a question. What substance was common to all these test tubes? It wasn't the solid metals we used in each different test tube. The common factor is the copper 2 nitrate solution. If we know that the nitrate is a colorless iron, do you think the red-brown substance could be solid copper? If you said yes, you would be absolutely correct. Let me explain our results. What the results show is that copper metal is displaced from the copper 2 nitrate solution. For example, in the test tube containing zinc metal, the zinc reacts and pushes the copper ions out of the solution to form a zinc nitrate solution. This reaction only happens if the solid metal is more reactive than the metal in the solution. Looking at our observations, we can now say that copper is the least reactive of all the metals that we tested. Iron, zinc and lead displaced copper from the copper 2 nitrate solution and is therefore more reactive than copper. Let's write down the chemical equation for the reaction of zinc and copper 2 nitrate that we just saw in the animation. Let's start with the word equation. Our reactants are zinc and copper 2 nitrate. We know that zinc displaces copper to form a zinc solution. So our products are therefore copper and zinc nitrate. Our chemical equation for this reaction is zinc plus copper 2 nitrate react to form copper plus zinc nitrate. We can see that our equation is balanced because we've got the same number of atoms per element on the left as we do on the right of the equation. See if you can complete the equations for the other two reactions on your own. Iron plus copper 2 nitrate and lead plus copper 2 nitrate. Right. Let's have a look at the results of our second set of test tubes. Have a careful look at what happened in the test tubes containing the iron 2 nitrate solution. Can you see 
that there is no change in the test tube that contains the copper metal. The shiny copper metal looks exactly the same and the iron 2 nitrate solution is also still the same pale yellow green color. In the test tube containing the iron nail there is also no change. But here in the test tube containing the zinc, the zinc has become covered with a blackish layer and the pale yellow green solution has also changed. The last test tube also shows no sign of change. Once again, we need to note our observations in a table. Our results show that only zinc has displaced iron from its solution. That means that the zinc reacted, pushing the iron out of the solution to form a zinc solution. The iron is deposited in a solid form. This can only happen if zinc is more reactive than iron. Because lead and copper could not displace the iron, we can say that lead and copper are both less reactive than iron. Let's look at the equation of the reaction between zinc and iron 2 nitrate. Our word equation is zinc plus iron 2 nitrate react to form iron and zinc nitrate. Our chemical equation for this reaction is zinc plus iron 2 nitrate react to form iron plus zinc nitrate. Again, our equation is balanced because we've got the same number of atoms per element on the left of the equation as we do on the right. Remember, writing balanced chemical equations is a very important skill for you to master. So make sure that you practice all the equations we write throughout the series with me. Thanks for joining me in this first lesson on displacement reactions. See you in part two when we will continue to solve our reactivity series puzzle. Oh yes, and don't forget to try the task I gave you earlier. Goodbye. Yeah.